Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with another episode of The Yacking Show. This is a show that provides you with a greater range of actionable business tips and ideas than you'll find almost anywhere else on the internet. And we do that by bringing you interesting guests. Today's will be no exception. But before I hand over to co-host Kathleen, let, let me just remind you that we also have a newsletter, a weekly newsletter to keep you informed of forthcoming and current guests. So if you want to keep in touch, sign up for our newsletter. It's on the website. And now it is my job to introduce co-host Kathleen Bove from down the road in Waterloo, Ontario. Hi, Kathleen. How are you today? I'm doing great, Peter. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much for tuning in to our show. We so appreciate you and we love reading your comments. So please keep those coming. And if anyone is interested in being a guest on our show, we invite you to visit our website at theyackingshow.com. All you need to do is click on the contacts tab where you will find a short application form. We would love to hear from you. And as Peter mentioned, we do have another special guest with us today. We're very excited to welcome Welcome, Shay Wheat. Hello, Shay. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing phenomenal. Thank you. Super excited to be here. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Shay is the founder of Grace and Ease. She's a certified international event producer for entrepreneurs who transform lives. Her team helps you to gain, to, to plan, to produce, and host powerful and profitable events with grace and ease. But first, um, we would love to hear a little bit about your background, Shay. So if you can give us that and what led you to become an event organizer? Yeah, so I, I kind of think I fell into it. I didn't do that or being in the right place at the right time. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, so I was, you know, young, trying to figure out what am I supposed to do? What's my next best step in life? I was in a network marketing company. I'm a Reiki master, an energetic healer. I'm managing an apartment complex. I'm doing a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. And I was um, on somebody else's stage. It was at the beginning of the new year. And it was all about new year, new you. And so I was talking about appreciation marketing Mm -hmm. and it was a multi-speaker event. Um, And so, you know, we kind of like switched off the microphones back and forth and me just being me was like, Hey dude, don't go spitting on my mic to the guy that was going to give me his microphone. (laughs) (laughs) You're funny. Who the heck are you? Right. Just a (laughs) random chick. (laughs) <laughs> and come to find out, he was actually the head of education for Dr. Oz's nonprofit. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. I actually just met his sister Saval at a women's conference that Maria Shriver was putting on, where they had 14,000 tickets sell out in 14 minutes. <gasps> wow. Right? And so obviously I couldn't get a ticket. And so I'm like, how do I get there? I'm going to volunteer. And that's how I ended up meeting his sister. Didn't know it was his sister. I was just helping her out. She had like this big old huge cast on her foot, like a big old boot. And I was like, hey, they don't need me right now. Can I help you to your seat? And she was like, yeah, that would be amazing. Come to find out she's like Dr. Raza's sister. And she's like, do you want to hang out with us? This is Donna Karen DKNY. This is so-and-so. I was like, bye. I, I, you know, just random gal from California. Um, (laughs) So, you know, he was like, that's fascinating because she is best friends with our CEO and we're doing a women's conference. You should help us. And I looked at him and I was like, okay. (laughs) Wow. Wow. I became in charge of over a hundred volunteers and over 70 speakers for that women's conference. And that was my introduction to becoming an associate producer. Mm -hmm. Wow. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Beautiful for you. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Keep showing up. Keep saying yes. (laughs) And then a baptism of fire thereafter. I mean, you didn't just start at the, at the shallow end, did you? (laughs) Yeah. No, I jumped all in. (laughs) I'm like, all right, here we go. (laughs) <laughs> Wonderful. So back to what you do, and, and we you've got a number of questions to ask you about what you do. But one that interests me is if an entrepreneur comes to you thinking about an event, at, at what stage of the business would you suggest to them that they host a live event? Or... 
Yeah, so there are actually over 17 different types of events that you can be utilizing in your business. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you're at in your business, you're going to utilize these events in different times and different areas at different opportunities. So if you're somebody who's just starting out, you're more in phase one. In phase one, you are validating. In, mm-hmm. in phase one, your goal is to get clients and get them crazy awesome results. You should not be doing events. Your goal is to make sure that you've done your market research, you're validating your offer, you're modifying your offer, you're making sure that you know people are actually getting crazy awesome value from what it is that you're doing to the point where you have eight to 10 paying clients, Mm -hmm. getting them crazy awesome results, getting testimonials, tweaking and adjusting things. This now means you have proof of concept. You've got ways to now start leveraging what it is that you're doing and move into the next phase. So phase two is visibility. In visibility, you want to make sure that you're doing just that. You're becoming more visible. Now, if you're newer to business, you know, you just maybe had eight to 10 paying clients, you may not have a whole lot of cash flow. You want to be utilizing free platforms. Mm -hmm. So this is where your Facebook lives, your clubhouse rooms, your Instagrams, um, your TikToks, if that's where your audience is, those are the types of platforms you're wanting to utilize. And on top of that, you also want to look at being a guest speaker on other people's stages. Mm -hmm. So other people's webinars, other people's podcasts, other people's summits. The third way to really start gaining visibility is being a sponsor of Mm -hmm. some type of event, being a speaker sponsor, specifically at some type of enrollment event where you have your ideal audience, right? So you're kind of paying to play, but if it's your ideal audience and you know that they're a really good fit and you make a free offer to join, you know, get the five steps to X, Y, Z, then you know, based on the numbers that they're going to start nurturing them and you'll start to get to know them and you'll start to grow your list and your visibility. So you can see how we're already starting to utilize events Mm -hmm. as a part of your business and it can start out really, really soon. So that's phase one and phase two. Phase Phase three is one, it's starting to get a little bit interesting because phase three is the grow phase. And when you're growing, you're looking to grow your list, you're looking to grow your visibility, and you're gonna start looking at creating your own stages. Mm -hmm. So that means you're starting to host your own masterclasses, your own webinars, your own summits, and you're looking to obtain larger speaker sponsorship opportunities, right? Because now you have some cash flow. Now you have, you know, proof of concept. You've got a list. You've got things growing. You've got some systems in place. And you need to now grow. That then moves. So in phase two, I forgot to mention, in phase two, to move to phase three, you'll do that to the point where you are making it pretty much a consistent $5,000 a month. Mm-hmm. In phase three, to move to phase four, you're you know getting more leads, you're booking more strategy calls, you're having more conversations, you're making more offers, you have more people in your programs, you're supporting more and more people, you're getting them all crazy awesome results to the point where you're doing about $10,000 a month pretty consistently. That means you move into phase four. And phase four of event leverage is scale. Okay. For- where the object and the goal of scale is to do just that. Scale your business, scale your systems to the point where you're making 20,000 some odd dollars, right? Um, Even 15 to 20. In the scaling phase, you are wanting to look at changing up some of your sales conversations to go from Mm one-on-one to -to one-to-many. And the way that we do that is through like a one-day sales and enrollment event, uh, a retreat or a workshop. This is also a place where you, by now in phase four, you've grown a team. You have people supporting you. You have people supporting your clients potentially to allow you to really focus on gaining more leads and filling your events and your programs to then take you to the point where you move into phase five, which is leverage. And in phase five, this is where my clients are like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting forever to get to phase five and be in leverage because the whole goal of phase five 
is to stay in your zone of genius and just do the things that are growing your client base and loving on your clients and you know, essentially delegating everything else to your team because you have the systems, you have the things in place that allow you to leverage your time. And when you're in phase five, this is when you're looking at utilizing three-day sales and enrollment events, which a lot of our clients utilize to continue to create really a community of raving fans, um, you know, continue to offer your high ticket programs and, and utilize that as a model to really support the growth of the business, support the growth of your clientele, get them even bigger, crazy, awesome results, and allow you to, you know, really focus on what it is that you love to do and really stay in your genius zone. Okay. Wow. So now you refer to them, uh, Shay, as uh, phases, but I had a question that referred to five easy steps, but these are the steps that you were That's you were speaking exactly. of. So yeah. my, my next question then is virtual, in-person, or hybrid? Which ah. one would, which one should I choose? <laughs> it really depends on what it is that you're looking to do and what phase of business that you're in. Okay. So um, with every single event, whether it's a Facebook Live, whether it's a masterclass, whether it's a three-day sales and enrollment event, we always look at what is the vision and what is the event promise. So whether the clients do business with you or not, what are they getting out of the event? What are they getting out of the time with you? Okay. And based on that, it could also influence whether you're going to be virtual, whether you're going to be hybrid, or you're going to be in person. Now, a lot of people starting out, I recommend you choose one or the other, in-person or virtual. The reason being is when you start taking a look at hybrid events, when they're done correctly, it's really two events. It's mm -hmm. two teams, it's two audiences, it's two MCs, it's you know two AV teams, it's it's supporting a lot of people. So just recently, we ended up su supporting a hybrid event. And we ended up having 250 VIPs in person. And we had probably another 300 some on people virtually from all over the world. Wow. Now, in order to make that happen, we had an MC for the main stage. We ended up having a hotel. We ended up having food and beverage. We ended up having, you know, um, the VIPs come in and get swag bags and really love on them. We had some sponsors in person. And then we had also a virtual stage. So we had another riser in, in the room with a virtual MC in the room connecting with our virtual audience. Wow. So, right? It's a, There's so many layers to it, Peter. It's kind of crazy. You know, um, the experience is amazing. Both sides of the audience was like mind blown because we had it set up this way, because we had extra, you know, behind the scenes for our virtual audience. When you end up having an in-person event and you're moving 250 people, you've got to give them 30 minutes to go mm -hmm. on a break. But when you're in a virtual space, your bathroom, your lunch is just down the hallway, right? So you just need 15 yep. minutes. So what do we do with that 15 minute gap? So on the virtual stage, we ended up having special interviews. We ended up having, you know, people come up. We ended up doing behind the scenes and walking the camera around and showing people coming in the room and, you know, coming behind the scenes and doing interviews with the team and with the host and all kinds of stuff. Wow. But if you're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, there's a reason, right? Hybrid's really intense. Yeah. My suggestion, if you're just starting out and you're newer to business, you're going to want to stay with either in-person or virtual with a lot of it being it's easier on your budget as well. Mm -hmm. And if you're really looking at budget, stick with virtual. Right. We've got clients that are making multiple six and seven figures had a client make $1.8 million from a three-day sales and enrollment event from virtual. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. So it can be done. It can be done when it's set up right and you know how to fill the room and you know what you're offering and you get people crazy awesome results, right? So it doesn't have to be 250 people either. 
Mm -hmm. We've got clients that are doing in-person events with 20 people in the room Mm -hmm. and still making six figures. We've got people that are doing virtual events with 20 or 50 people in the room and making six figures. Wow. It it's very, very powerful. The Mm -hmm. main thing going back to where we started with this is what is the intention? What is the promise? What are people getting out of your event, whether they do business with you or not? As long as we hit those check marks, you're going to have an amazing event. Right. Because mechanics and and logistics intrigue me, the big event you were talking about, the the hybrid, what was your team of organizers for that? Mm. How many people? Yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, including all the AV and everything? Yeah. Over 70. Yeah. And you had to, so so that's another complexity. You've got a huge team to organize too. Wow, right. that's, un- that's why they hire me. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so like, I don't want to deal with that. You handle that. <laughs> wow. wow, 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 amazing. So, so here's one for you that just listening to you speaking about hybrid, has the live event industry, for want of a better term, recovered from the lockdown, or is it still in the in the pro, in the rehabilitation stage? It's fascinating to watch. Um, I think it is still in the rehab phase. Um, I, I, part of our business is we support our clients with finding event and venue space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some, some of our clients are like, Hey, I I'm just doing, you know, a 20 person mastermind, a 15 person mastermind. I just need you to find the venue and set up the food and beverage, negotiate the contract, like just handle that. And I'm doing it three times in the year. Can you do all three? Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm doing that this morning with one of our clients. And, you know, the hotels have been hit so hard, Mm. right? They had to release a lot of people. A lot of their amazing people ended up leaving and going someplace else or starting a whole different career. So when we came back, a lot of that workforce was no longer available and didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. So that means they're training new people. They're also really slow to hire new people back. So they are understaffed, completely understaffed in every aspect, in sales and in marketing and in, you know, their on-site support and everywhere they're understaffed, which makes it a little bit more difficult for us who are going, hey, I've got clients for you. I just need you to get back to me and say, can we do this? (laughs) Right. And we, we are constantly calling. So we, we ended up um, just on Thursday responding back going, this is great. We just have these couple of questions, let us know. And then we're ready to move on contract. And we called again on, so that was Thursday. We called again on Friday. We called again on Monday. We emailed, we ended up calling our two other contacts that we actually have at that particular hotel because our, our team actually, you know, can source all over the world. Mm -hmm. We've got you know, amazing contracts and amazing um, connections, but we still weren't hearing anything back. And so I'm having to go back to the client and going, I swear, I promise you, I'm stalking them. Like I'm so reaching out so many different ways that I know how, and they just aren't getting back to us. Um, This is my recommendation. I'm, you know, I'm going to have to go to plan B and plan C if I don't hear back from them. I kid you not. I click send on the text and then I get the email from them. And you get the email. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Of course. Of course. Now I hear back from you, but they probably felt it energetically, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. It's it's, even for, you know, like a a 20 person event, um, you want somebody like ourselves to do that stocking for you, Mm -hmm. so to speak, because there is so much more follow up. There is so much more that we have to put into the contracts now to make sure that we're covering your assets versus just the hotel side of things. Uh, right. Their contracts are benefiting them. They don't yeah. benefit you. And we put in extra clauses and we put in extra things to make sure that we're safeguarding you as much as possible. Oh, wow. And and just thinking about that, it answers something else I was going to ask you. For a small or to medium-sized business to try and uh, sort that out by themselves uh, without this knowledge that the hotels are short-staffed and maybe the people aren't disqualified. They could walk into all sorts of pits and and uh, problems there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. We, we actually saved somebody $15,000 yeah. 
by looking at their contract yeah. and going, you know, we need to fix this. We need to change this because there's just little nuances that if you don't mm-hmm. read the fine print, you know, we're going to charge this 35% on top of this, or, you know, you can't bring in your own AV. You have to use our AV companies, which is not the case. You know, there's things that we can do and ask for to make it. So mm-hmm. it is going to support your budget and what it is that you're looking to do and have an amazing event versus having to use what they say you have to use. Sure, sure, sure. So a lot of, I guess, a lot of small businesses look at an event to to actually make money. Mm-hmm. But from what you've been saying earlier on, that's not always the prime objective, right? To, to make money directly from the event. Uh, so do you look for some way of measuring a return on investment on every event or, or not necessarily? And how do you do it? That's, how does the small business actually do it? That's the next question. Yeah. So earlier I was mentioning there's 17 different types of events. Yes. Um, so if you're writing this down, you're going to want to write down um, one of the events is a 90 minute workshop, a summit, a retreat, a mastermind, mm. A one-day sales and enrollment event, a three-day sales and enrollment event, seminars, podcasts, meetups, Facebook Lives, Instagram Lives, clubhouse rooms, conferences, challenges, hackathons, conventions, wow. trade shows, wow. right? Like there's a yeah. bunch out there that you can sure. utilize. Now, not all of these are going to be instant revenue producing sure. type of events, right? You could do a summit where the goal and intention of your summit is lead gen and list mm-hmm. build. So it, I did a summit myself last year where I ended up um, hosting a number of my clients to talk about, because I've, I've got amazing clients in health and fitness and wealth and tax and um, business. And so I was able to bring them all together and have them speak with me interview style for 20 minutes. I interviewed two people a day um, and ended up, they can make a free offer. So it was a list build for them. They mailed out for me promoting the summit it was a list build for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course I'm also on there suggesting, Hey, let's have a strategy session. If events are something that's of interest to you, then let's connect. Um, I offered a VIP option to upgrade for the people that couldn't join on the event at that exact time. They mm-hmm. could get the recordings and they could get like my ticket map because um, a lot of people ask me, how do you fill your rooms? Mm-hmm. So that was a bonus that they got on top of it. So it wasn't a huge money maker for me uh, on the front end, you know, just a little bit of money on the VIP side, but it was more of the intention of giving them crazy, awesome value, building my Facebook group, as well as building my email list to then nurture people, invite them to my master classes, you know, get them on my list and, you know, tell them about my newsletter, um, where I put on there all kinds of things about what's happening in the industry and what I'm reading, getting to know me, what's happening with my clients events, things like that. Right. Okay. So the ROI there, you're going to be taking a look at, you know, what is the goal of adding to your email list, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, so anytime we do an event, we're looking at filling the room, whether it's paid or not, how are you plan on filling the room? What are the goals? What are the intentions? What is the promise? Um, And then we go through all of our event fundamentals to actually produce the event. So it's going to be a powerful event, not only for us, but also for the audience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. That's that's very good. Thank you, Kathleen. So, Shay, if I was to, if I were to call you as a client, can you walk us through the steps that you would take with me and event planning? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, first step would be kind of filling out a bit of a an application, so to speak. Okay pretty much just a a form that tells me a little bit more about what it is that you've got going on and what are your goals and intentions. So what I'm looking for right here is, you know, some of the questions that I end up asking um, my clients is, you know, what, what are your goals? When is the event? How much team do you have? What, what is your budget? Have you thought about your budget? What's the budget for having somebody like myself come in and support you? Um, what is the ticket? What is the ticket price? Is it virtual? Is it hybrid? Is it in person? Just kind of gives me a big picture. How many days is it? 
big picture of what it is that you want this event to be and what is the goal of it, right? And then we end up hopping on a call and kind of reviewing it. I'll ask you a number of more questions about it, kind of give you my thoughts of next steps for you. Whether it be, okay, you know what? We really need to start you out with like a 90 minute workshop, doing a masterclass, start building your list, start making small offers from the stage and get you to the point where you then can start doing a one day or a three day event. 90 minutes in the beginning is a lot. (laughs) <laughs> for somebody starting out and right. you know you don't know you run a show and you don't know how to fill the room and you don't know what your sales page needs to look like we support you with looking at all of those details in one of our intensives and you know lay it out for you and that way people can go okay it's like a baby step so to speak so that's kind of how we <laughs> work um really figuring out where are you at where are you wanting to go this is the gap and this is how we fill the gap Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Earlier on, you were, you were telling us and our audience um, the difficulties with the hotels, particularly and, and event venues coming out of the lockdown and short of staff. Uh, and I, I hear what you're saying. So what are the other reasons for someone who wants to put on an event using a certified event planner like yourself, as opposed to somebody who their mother recommends or their cousins <laughs> aren't? You know the story. Yeah, absolutely. So as a certified event producer, um, we are people that actually look at the big picture. So a lot of planners out there are fantastic at going, okay, what do you want to do? Let me just implement that for you. As a certified event producer, we're going to say, okay, what do you want to do? Okay, fantastic. This is what's working right now in the industry. This is how we can up-level you. This is the team that you actually need. This is what we need to make sure you have in place before it happens. So there's a lot more strategy Mm -hmm. that goes into it. We also take a look at your entire business plan and go, you know, how does this event fit into your business plan? Mm -hmm. So we'll have, you know a 360 view, 365 view of what's going on. How are you using masterclasses every single month to then lead into, you know, your big three-day sales and enrollment event, right? So it's like looking at the big picture versus somebody that's just going to come in and implement something for you. We're going to, right. Which, which might be the wrong thing because you don't, you haven't thought it through properly. So yeah, good, good answer. I got I got a question for you that I want to get in quick before we run out of time, and um, <laughs> this has got very little to do with event planning, okay. uh, but because of your experience and your success, and, and right at the start, how you started in this business, you've obviously got a fairly good perspective on the sort of people that do well and those who don't. So, Shay, in your mind, is is there a habit or a characteristic or a mindset that differentiates people who will become successful? And I don't just mean making a lot of money. I mean having a balanced and contented life from the majority who get stuck in a rut and remain average and discontented. Is there something simple or is it more complicated? Uh, I feel as entrepreneurs, we have this fire and desire within like our gut and our soul Mm -hmm. Um, where we are constantly working on ourselves. (laughs) A lot of us are in the businesses that we're in because we did something that we needed to quote unquote fix within ourselves in Mm -hmm. order to figure out because we, we wanted to work on it. Right. So I'll, a lot of our entrepreneurs that we work with, they're all great in personal development. They're always working on themselves. They're always looking at How do I do this differently? How do I do this better? How do I be of service? That's a big piece of it too. It's not all about them. It's all about being of service and knowing that when you send out love, when you send out to give, it comes back to you tenfold. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think those are intrinsic to the inside of a, a very successful entrepreneur is whether or not you do business with me, If I pour into you, I know that it'll come back to me tenfold. I'm not expecting it to, but I just know, like I know, like I know that it will come back to me and I'm okay with that. Wonderful. That's great. Very good. Very good. Thank you for that. So Shay, we are running low on time, but how do people contact you? 
Yes. So we are on all of the social media platforms, uh, Grace and Ease Productions or Shea Wheat. Um, and then you can also find us at graceandeaseproductions.com for our website. And then I also have a free gift for all of your audience. Yay. Um, I know I spoke a little bit about the five phases mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm sure your audience is like, that was really fast. I need to like dive into it and look at it and print it out and hold it and go, what do I really need to do? I'm in phase two right now. How do I get to phase three? Um, so what I've done for your audience is I've put it all together, laid it out step by step on how to move through the phases. And the way to pick that up is go to fivephases.info. And that's spelling out the word five, F-I-V-E, phases with an S dot info forward slash yakking. Yes. Wonderful. Super. Thank you very much for that. And we'll make sure the audio people see that in the description and then they can also get onto that. So Shay, thank you very much. That was, that was really interesting. Really, really enjoyed hearing that. Um, thank you. Thank you very well. Shay. It was uh, such a, a, a privilege to have you on the show today and hopefully we can have you back sometime. Mm -hmm. again. That would so, be amazing. Absolutely. So until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>